Maddie, Maddie, I've been raped. What? That's horrible, short bus. How did it happen? It was this elephant. Hashtag me too. Hashtag me too. Ah, yeah. Miss Elephant can be a bit silly after a few wines. What exactly did she do? She stared at me for like 10 whole seconds. Uh, that's not buddy. You, you really shouldn't be making accusations that aren't true, you know. She also said I looked really good today. Um, okay, that's not quite either, my man. Um, is that all she did? No, she walked up to me and tried to kiss me. And, and what did you do? I said, ah, girl gems. Then I ran away. I was ripped. She ripped me. Maddie, she ripped me. Um, buddy. Yes, Maddie. Why do you think that's ripped? Pigantine Pig said that each time someone does something you don't want them to, that's ripped. Oh no, buddy. I told you not to listen to Pigantine Pig. She just wants you to get angry so you'll feed her. Yeah, short bus. Don't be such a prude. Ah, she's ripping me again. She's ripping me again. My God, he's hot. Oh boy, short bus. We really need to chat. Craig McLaughlin believes his colourful career on stage and screen has been annihilated. Two more uh, women have come forward. We don't know what exactly they're alleging at this stage. Three female castmates have gone public with serious allegations dating back to the show's Melbourne run in 2014. Alleging a whole raft of problems really um, stemming from sexual assault, sexual abuse and uh, bullying as well um, again. The role on stage was making its way into backstage and, and all, you know, also the content of the, of the show, which is very raunchy, that this highly sexualised environment. McLaughlin admits the backstage culture was lewd, but asks, does being cheeky and naughty equate with being a bully? No, it does not. Craig McLaughlin stands accused of sexual misconduct in the workplace. Three women have accused him of various things from trying to grab up their skirt, unwanted sexual advances and generally bad behaviour with sexual connotations. Angela Scundy, Christy Whelan-Brown and Erica Heinatz all claim he assaulted them during a Rocky Horror Show tour in 2014. Left-wing news organisations Fairfax and the ABC broke the story. He's calculated and manipulative, a predator, Craig McLaughlin, accused of indecent assault. For the past 25 years, Craig McLaughlin has been the golden-haired boy of the Australian theatre and television industry. But now, the Gold Logie award-winning actor, famous for his starring roles in Doctor Who Blake Mysteries, Neighbours, and Home and Away stands accused of indecent assault, sexual harassment, exposing himself and bullying female colleagues. Tellingly, this appears in the entertainment section of the Sydney Morning Herald. A major investigation by Fairfax Media and the ABC can reveal that a number of female cast members of the 2014 Rocky Horror Show have alleged they were abused, harassed or assaulted by McLaughlin, 52. Two cast members have lodged a complaint with Victoria Police, alleging that a number of actresses in the show were subjected to McLaughlin touching their genitals, groping their breasts, exposing himself and pressing his penis against them. The ABC also reports the accusations. Craig McLaughlin accused of indecent assault, sexual harassment during Rocky Horror Show. Victoria Police have confirmed an investigation is underway into allegations that award-winning Australian actor Craig McLaughlin committed multiple sexual offences while performing in the hit musical Rocky Horror Show in 2014. The confirmation comes after a joint ABC-Fairfax investigation revealed that three women from the production claim McLaughlin took advantage of his raunchy role as Dr. Frankenfurter to indecently assault, intimidate and harass them, both on and off stage. So right away the ABC point out that the police are investigating. Two of the women said they complained to senior production staff at the time but said nothing was done. Accusations we'll get to shortly. Their claims include that McLaughlin pulled a cast member's underpants aside and kissed her buttocks during a performance, that he exposed himself to another actress and kissed the third woman without her permission. He is also accused of reaching up an actress's skirt while she was on stage and he was backstage. 
The women allege he also bullied and intimidated some cast members. As you can see, the accusations are quite scandalous. They paint McLaughlin, a married man, as a serial sex pest. The article does mention that he denies the allegations, however. McLaughlin, 52, has strenuously denied all allegations. In an email to the ABC, he said, Frankly, they seem to be simple inventions, perhaps made for financial reasons, perhaps to gain notoriety. In either event, they are, to the best of my knowledge, utterly and entirely false. As a media company, they certainly know that most people only read the first few paragraphs of any article. It's good that they put the denial in this one but it's one mention in a long article that goes over the accusations against McLaughlin in detail. Essentially, they are paying lip service to journalistic integrity while still printing sensationalist accusations. In fact, not only does McLaughlin strongly deny these allegations, the production company also says that they have no evidence of any such behaviour on his behalf. Three women who accused Logie Award-winning actor Craig McLaughlin of indecent assault and sexual harassment during the 2014 run of musical The Rocky Horror Show said the production company behind it knew about the allegations, despite claims to the contrary. Gordon Frost organisation, GFO, said Monday it was not aware of any details regarding the allegations made by actresses Christy Whelan-Brown, Angela Scundy and Erica Heenat claiming it was shocked to learn of them. McLaughlin has categorically denied all claims, calling the allegations simple inventions. So Craig McLaughlin categorically denies the accusations, and the production company itself also denies there were any complaints made against him. Yet the ABC and Fairfax felt it necessary to focus their attention almost entirely on the allegations, not the fact that there was no actual proof behind them. Anyway... Craig McLaughlin says the truth will come out. Gold Logie award-winning actor Craig McLaughlin will fight the claims of sexual misconduct against him, saying his career has been annihilated by the accusations. The former Rocky Horror Show star has admitted that the show's backstage culture could be lewd, but insists he is innocent of the allegations against him. He told News Corp in his first public interview since the allegations surfaced earlier this month. The accusations have seriously damaged his career. He's been forced to step down from his role in the Rocky Horror Show, and the ABC have axed his show, The Dr. Blake Mysteries. McLaughlin is now suing the ABC and Fairfax for defamation. The ABC and Fairfax would have done well to run this story past their legal teams before publishing. If they did, they should probably consider getting new ones. But hey, it's not like the media has a clear guide on this kind of thing or anything. Thankfully, the internet exists. I'll link to the full law in the description, but this is a simpler explanation. In Australia, defamation is defined as defamation is to spread bad reports about someone which could do them harm. The verb is to defame. You can defame someone if you say something false about them which spoils their good reputation, which makes people want to avoid them or hurts them in their work or in their profession. To defame someone, you do not have to make up false things yourself. You might defame a person by repeating or replaying words spoken by someone else. For example, an interviewee. It is no defense to claim that you are only quoting someone else. If you print or broadcast something defamatory, you could be taken to court, along with your producer, your editor, or your station manager, and the person who said the words in the first place. Well, isn't that interesting? I guess they must have just forgotten that part of the law. Maybe they thought reporting serious allegations that are strongly denied that damage a man's reputation was just too juicy to not report. Innocent until proven guilty and all. Or is it the other way around? I mean, he's an evil member of the patriarchy after all. No doubt they will defend themselves by claiming the allegations are the truth. Defences to defamation. Truth is probably the best defence. Formerly in some states, truth was only a defence if you could prove that our public interest was served by publishing the defamatory works. The requirement has been dropped from the Uniform Defamation Law, and there is now a defence if the defendant can prove that the defamatory imputations are substantially true.
So given that Craig McLaughlin's reputation has been severely damaged to the point that his career and income have been lost, you'd think they would have done their due diligence. I mean, you would have thought they would have actually done a proper investigation that involved asking the production company for a statement before printing blatantly defamatory accusations. Then again, they did get a statement. They just buried it in the article likely hoping nobody would pay attention and instead focus on the juicy gossip. I mean, they must know they have to prove the allegations are substantially true, right? Surely they would have asked the production company for evidence of formal complaints made against McLaughlin. I mean, they are respectable media organisations and all, totally not fake news or anything. True or not, you'd think Failfax and their ABC would have actually done some research before printing a blatantly defamatory story. You'd think they'd at least give even focus on both sides of the story, but apparently a man's reputation just isn't worth it. Even if 100 people make accusations against one man, that doesn't mean they are true. Do they have anything on camera? Do they have anything recorded? Do they even have an admission from the company involved? Do they have any records from the company involved? Do they even have credible eyewitness testimony other than the women making the accusations themselves? No, they don't. They just printed accusations by these women and said, listen and believe. Either Fairfax and the ABC didn't do their journalistic duty to discover and report the truth, or they don't care what the truth is and they just wanted the headline. Regardless, it is obvious they didn't act as objective truth-tellers. Instead, they seemingly preferred the narrative of the male sexual assaulter versus the poor, innocent whammons. A narrative started by the Harvey Weinstein revelations and the hashtag MeToo movement. After the Weinstein scandal broke, a number of famous men were accused of their own sexual misconduct. Some were found to be true, others not so much, and have since resulted in defamation suits. Today I have filed defamation proceedings against the Daily Telegraph in the Federal Court of Australia. Hashtag MeToo started trending on Twitter with women accusing men everywhere of sexually assaulting them. Oprah Winfrey even made a virtue signalling speech at the Golden Globes to raise awareness or something or other. It's become vogue to accuse men of sexual harassment at every opportunity. Thus, it's even more important that media organisations report the facts accurately and objectively. Also, given how readily feminists claim sexual assault is an epidemic, it is important to define it specifically. Independent Man has done plenty of videos on issues like this, and I'll link to an excellent one he made on the so-called rape epidemic on university campuses. It's well worth a watch. Spoiler alert though, the study classifies just looking at a woman as sexual assault. Anyway, the definitions. Harass. To annoy or bother someone in a constant or repeated way. So for something to be considered harassment, it needs to be constant and unwanted. That means simply trying to kiss someone once is not sexual harassment. Yes, it may be inappropriate, and you certainly shouldn't do it at work, but it does not constitute sexual harassment. Behaviour can be lewd and inappropriate, but also not be harassment. Sexual assault is defined as illegal sexual contact that involves force upon a person without consent or is inflicted upon a person who is incapable of giving consent or who places the assailant in a position of trust or authority. Which brings me back to my thoughts on Craig McLaughlin and his case. I don't know what happened on the Rocky Horror Show way back in 2014. I wasn't there. All I can go on is the evidence available, and right now the evidence is a few accusations on one hand, and a complete denial on the other. Those accusing McLaughlin of sexual assault and harassment haven't produced any hard evidence to back up their claims at all. Where's the actual evidence of sexual contact involving force? Where's the hard evidence of constant and repeated unwanted sexual behaviour? They've made teary statements to the media along with police reports, but that's it. If there's hard evidence, they should produce it so that this issue can be put to bed once and for all. Keeping in mind, all this allegedly happened during the production of an already sexually charged story, The Rocky Horror Show. 
If these women are so dismayed by such conduct, why are they working on a show like that? As News.com reports, In the lewd department, I am nothing compared to what's surrounding me. The lewdness I am surrounded by on a show like Rocky Horror is, as they say on Spinal Tap, 11. I might be operating on 10, but all the men around me, in the lewd department, I am nothing compared to what's surrounding me. As the old boy, I don't come close in the filth department. So these women were working in what was already a sexually charged environment, and doing so with their full consent. Then, three years after the fact, just when the hashtag MeToo movement is in full swing, they happen to all come out and accuse him at the same time. There is no record they raise the issue when it allegedly occurred, despite their claims of doing so. It doesn't look like any of them resigned or escalated any claim at the time either. Surely, if he was such a deviant, he'd be intolerable to work with. How about some personal responsibility? Or are women always oppressed victims, thus incapable of owning their own actions? As a man, I can tell you, quite honestly, I've done some really stupid things in the past. I mean, not me exactly, this idiot. I've never sexually assaulted or harassed a woman, but I certainly hit on women and showed interest when it wasn't wanted. In ways you may even consider crude. The only way to know if a girl is actually interested in you, is to show interest yourself. You should always stop when she tells you, but the idea that trying to kiss a woman is somehow sexual harassment is bordering on man-hatred. There is nothing wrong with showing interest in a woman. Nothing at all. In fact, it's a perfectly natural part of life. Feminists shaming men for simply showing interest in women, however crudely, are truly bad people. I've said and done plenty of dumb things. So have all of us. We are human. We've all made mistakes, but that's how you learn and grow as a person. If a man repeatedly hits on a woman despite her clear lack of interest, it constitutes harassment. If he stops, then that's the end of the issue. If someone's behavior at work is truly out of line, you should take it up with management, and if they do nothing, then you should escalate further at the time. Don't wait three years for a time when accusing men is trending in the media. That looks like nothing more than cynical publicity hunting, whether that's what you're actually doing or not. The simple act of accusing is enough to destroy a man's life. Craig McLaughlin will forever be the famous actor who was accused of sexual assault, whether the accusations are true or not. False accusations also diminish the claims of actual victims of sexual violence. When you conflate being poorly flirted with to sexual harassment, you are doing a bad thing for real victims. Sexually abusing or assaulting anyone is a horrible act, as is accusing an innocent man. I honestly believe suppression orders are the solution for these cases. Until a conviction has occurred, the courts should suppress the identities of all parties involved in the case. Women who have been assaulted or harassed should certainly report it to their managers and to the police if needed, but they should not be getting their faces on camera simply because they made an accusation. The hashtag MeToo movement risks alienating many men even more than they already are. No man should ever be ashamed to call a girl pretty or to ask her out for a coffee, but this is where we are heading. All thanks to decades of feminist indoctrination of which the hashtag MeToo movement is largely a result. In the meantime, if you're a media company who's repeating obviously defamatory accusations, thus also defaming, but you don't have any hard evidence to back up those accusations, don't be surprised if you end up in court. You muppets. I said I don't want to go out with you, Miss Elephant. Oh, come on. Just touch my trunk a little bit. Arrgh. Ooh, so hot. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, leave a like, leave a comment, and go check out all my other stuff and subscribe if you want to. If you do subscribe, don't forget to click that bell so you get notifications every time I upload a video. Again, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you around.